Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of 10 benzyl oxynarciclazine. This work was published in Tetrahedron by the Kornienko and Hudlicki groups in their paper Synthesis and Biological Evaluation of 10 benzyl oxynarciclazine and builds upon their previous work into the synthesis and biological activities of the amaryllidacea alkaloids. Narciclazine was first discovered in 1967 in Narcissus bulbs by Seriotti and was shown to have potent anti-cancer activity. It works by inhibiting protein synthesis at the ribosomal 60S unit by forming hydrogen bonds with the RNA of the peptidyl transferase center. These hydrogen bonds form with the hydroxyl groups on the outer rim of the molecule, leaving the inner bay area of the molecule free from modification, such as in this example where they install a benzyl oxy group at the 10 position. These alkaloids have attracted a lot of attention from the synthetic community due to their challenging structures, which includes four fused rings, one of which contains four contiguous stereocenters, with three of them being tertiary hydroxyl groups. What makes this example so challenging is the maximally substituted aromatic ring, which must be constructed in a highly regioselective manner to ensure that all six substituents are in the correct position. So let's start with the retrosynthesis. They could first disconnect at the carbon-carbon bond that holds the polycyclic ring system together, and this could be installed using a HEC reaction. To produce the ring bearing the 1,4 amino alcohol motif, they could use a reductive ring opening of an oxazine, which would result from a cycloaddition between a diene and a nitrosyl group that could be generated in situ from a hydroxamic acid. This hydroxamic acid could be introduced using chlorination and hydroxylamination of a carboxylic acid. The hexasubstituted compound required for these reactions could be produced using bromination, formulation and oxidation chemistry, and ultimately the synthesis would start from a trihydroxylated benzaldehyde. So let's start with the synthesis of the A-ring. In order to selectively react the hydroxyl group para to the aldehyde, they first reacted the molecule with a mixture of borax and sodium hydroxide, which forms a borate that transiently protects the 2 and 3 hydroxyl groups. This leaves the 4 hydroxy group free to react with dimethyl sulfate and produces the 4 methoxy ether in a 56% yield. This was then reacted with dibromomethane to install the methylene group between the 2 and 3 hydroxyl groups. The aldehyde was then subject to a Dakin oxidation, reacting the molecule with hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid, first protonates the carbonyl, allowing the peroxide to attack and form a hydroperoxy intermediate that is protonated and can then eliminate water along with the formation of a carbon-oxygen double bond and the migration of the aryl group in a mechanism that is very similar to the Bayer-Villager reaction. After this migration takes place, the formal group is attacked by methanol and is ultimately hydrolyzed to produce the phenol in a 92% yield. In the next reaction, the position ortho to this phenol was brominated using nn dibromo dimethyl hydantone. This reacts similarly to MBS and is a source of electrophilic bromine. This undergoes an electrophilic aromatic substitution with the ring and produces the monobrominated product in high yield. With this in place, the phenol was then benzylated using benzyl bromide and sodium hydride. To functionalize the remaining CH bond of the aromatic ring, they then used a Reich formulation. Dichloromethyl methyl ether was first activated by titanium tetrachloride and this underwent an electrophilic aromatic substitution with the ring, which was activated by the orthomethoxy group. This produced the chloromethyl ether upon the elimination of a proton, and hydrolysis of this species with hydrochloric acid produced the target aldehyde. This was taken forward without purification and subject to a pinic oxidation. Chlorous acid was produced by the reaction of sodium chloride with sodium dihydrogen phosphate, and this first protonates the aldehyde, and the resulting oxonium ion is then attacked by chloride, forming a hemiaminal type intermediate. A hydrogen is then abstracted, oxidizing the molecule to a carboxylic acid and eliminating hypochlorous acid. This is then scavenged by sulfamic acid, as it can inhibit the reaction if present in high quantities. To turn this carboxylic acid into the acyl chloride, the researchers used the Vilsmeer hack reagent. Dimethylformamide reacts with oxyl chloride. This produces an aminium intermediate and a free chloride ion, which acts as a nucleophile to attack this aminium, and ultimately leads to the elimination of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and another chloride ion. The aminium chloride 
is the active chlorination reagent, which is first attacked by the carboxylic acid, forming a chlorohemiamyl type intermediate, which activates the carboxylic acid and allows the chloride ion to attack, regenerating the dimethylformamide and producing the target acyl chloride in a 91% yield. This acyl chloride was reacted with hydroxylamine to produce the hydroxamic acid that will be used in the nitroso diels alder reaction. So with this fragment in hand, let's look at the synthesis of the D-ring. This starts with an enzymatic dihydroxylation of bromobenzene using a strain of E. coli which overexpresses toluene dioxygenase and is capable of dihydroxylating a wide array of aromatic starting materials in a reaction that has no known chemical equivalent. This method was first developed by Gibson and the Hudlicky group have pioneered its use by utilising it in many total syntheses. This reaction produces the dihydroxylated compound in a 70% yield on the gram scale with the hydroxyl groups bearing a cis stereochemistry. These hydroxyl groups were protected as an acetal before being taken forward into the cycloaddition step. In this nitrosyl diels alder reaction, the hydroxamic acid is first oxidised to a nitrosyl group using tetrabutyl ammonium periodate, and this is reacted in situ with the bromodiene and produces the cycloaddict as a single isomer in an 85% yield. This cycloaddition sets up the necessary 1-4 relationship between the amide and the hydroxyl group, which is achieved by reduction using aluminium turnings together with mercury chloride and potassium hydroxide, which reduces the NO bond and breaks open the oxazine ring, together with the selective debromination of the cyclohexene ring without affecting the brominated aryl ring. This reaction required a lot of optimization, and they found that aluminium turnings were essential to the reaction success, as using aluminium foil also debrominated the aryl ring and only returned traces of the desired product. With this ring now complete, they turned their attention to the Heck reaction which would complete the skeletal framework. Before this, however, they found that they first had to protect the hydroxyl group and the amine, which they completed using TBS and Bach groups respectively. In this Heck reaction, the palladium first undergoes oxidative addition into the carbon-bromine bond and then forms a pi complex with the alkene. This can then undergo a migratory insertion, forming the desired carbon-carbon bond and produce a sigma-bonded palladium complex. A beta hydride elimination then follows to restore the alkene and produce a hydridopalladium bromide species. This undergoes reductive elimination upon reaction with thallium acetate to regenerate the palladium catalyst. This is quite an unusual heck coupling as the cyclic nature of the product grants a very high degree of conformational rigidity. This forces the beta hydride elimination to occur in an anti fashion, which is uncommon as beta hydride eliminations typically occur when there is a syn relationship between the palladium and the hydride due to the more favourable orbital overlap. This is reflected in the yield of only 15% and the authors note that the yield was highly variable despite all efforts to optimise its yield and improve reproducibility. This challenge with these kind of heck couplings has been reported before by other authors and alternative strategies for cyclization proved to be unsuccessful. While this yield is low, it demonstrates an approach often seen in medicinal chemistry where researchers aren't concerned with the absolute yield of a reaction. They only care that they can generate enough product to do the necessary biological tests. In addition to forming the carbon-carbon bond, both the TBS group and the Bach group were lost during this Heck reaction. To complete the synthesis, a simple deprotection was carried out using TMS chloride and potassium iodide in anhydrous acetonitrile. The TMS group can bond to the ether, making it more electrophilic, while the iodide acts as a nucleophile to displace the methyl group. This was then quenched using 6 molar hydrochloric acid, which served to hydrolyze the acetal and complete the synthesis of the target molecule in a 46% yield. With this product now in hand, they tested its bioactivity against human neuroblastoma cells and compared it with compounds that had previously been synthesized by the group. They found that 10 benzyloxynarcyclazine, compound 8 in the figure shown, was much less effective than almost all the compounds they tested previously with the exception of compound 32, which lacks the lactam ring. This is an interesting result as previous forays into modifying the Bay area of this molecule show similar or enhanced activity when compared to the parent narcyclazine. Whether this is due to steric effects or electronic effects of the aromatic ring remains to be seen, but this synthetic route will open up new avenues for exploration for the functionalization of this interesting molecule. Well that's everything for this week. In the next video, we will look at the bonding in D-metal complexes.